All right, now that you know the basics of scientific notation, today we're going to use our exponent rules to figure out how to work with numbers that are in scientific notation without having to take them out of scientific notation. The first thing that you need to understand is how to change something that might appear like it's in scientific notation to scientific notation by adjusting the exponent. So if you look at these four examples here, you might look at those automatically at first glance and say, well, those are in scientific notation, but they're not. Because remember, the first number needs to be a number that's one or greater and less than 10. The absolute value of that needs to be between one and 10, but not 10, less than 10. So the decimal point in these guys are in the wrong spot. So the first thing I'm gonna ask that you do in the first column of this is I want you to ignore the power of 10. So you're gonna ignore this times 10 to the negative eighth for a second, and I just want you to look at 4,892. If I put that number in scientific notation, that number alone is 4.892 times 10 to the third. But I'm gonna now say, okay, well that is this, but I wanna multiply that by times 10 to the eighth. So I'm just gonna tack that back on. So I took this over here. Now I'm gonna look at the two powers, 10 to the negative third times 10 to the negative eighth. Remember, things that have the same base, when you're multiplying, you can add the exponents. And so three plus negative eight is negative five. And there you go, you have an answer in scientific notation. Now to prove it to you, down at the bottom here, I'm gonna prove that to you by saying 4,892 times 10 to the negative eighth. If I told you to put that in standard notation, I would ask you to take the decimal point and I'm gonna move it back eight places, right? So I moved it back four places already. I gotta go four more places. So this in standard notation is point zero, zero, zero. 0, 4, 8, 9, 2. That's what this equals in standard notation, right? But then if I said, okay, we'll now take that and put it back into scientific notation, well, I'm going to move the decimal point over to the right five places, which then would give me 4.892, oops, forgot the 2, times 10 to the negative fifth. So rather than take it back, move it back eight places, and then move it back until the decimal point's in the right spot to figure out what the exponent is, we're using our exponent rules. So for the next one, look how it says times 10 to the negative 25th. I could slide the decimal point to the left 25 places and then move it back up between the eight and the one, but I don't have to do that because all I have to do is think, well, 0 .00812 in scientific notation is 8.12 times 10 to the negative third power, and then we're gonna take that 8.12 times 10 to the negative third, and we're gonna multiply that by 10 to the negative 25th. And because these guys have the same base, 10 to the negative third and 10 to the negative 25th, you can add the exponents to give me 8.12 times 10 to the negative 28th. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Negative 335 times 10 to the 30 times 10 to the 17th. Let's just look at the negative 335 for a second. That would be negative 3.35 times 10 to the second, and then I'm going to tack on to the negative 3.35 times 10 to the second. I'm going to tack on the times 10 to the 17th. Since you have bases of 10 you can add the exponents to give me a final answer of negative 3.35 times 10 to the 19th. Okay, let's try the next one. The next one, let's just look at this number right here to start. I need to put the decimal point between the five and the one. So that's gonna become negative 5.1. We move the decimal point over four places to the right. So that's times 10 to the negative fourth because that's a small number. And then I'm gonna take the negative 5.1 times 10 to the negative fourth and multiply that by 10 to the 52nd. And since these guys have the same base, you add the exponents. So my final answer would be negative 5.1 times 10 to the 48th because negative four plus 52 is 48. 
Okay, now you practice. Try doing it just like I showed you. Do two through six. Number one is just an example for you. Stop the video and do it because once you tune back in, I'm just going to give you the answers. Okay, so there are the final answers. The final answers are in the boxes. The thing that I want to explain here is that you're going to start to see me take shortcuts and I'm going to skip this part. I'm going to do this part in my head. If you need to write this part to get the answer, do it. But I'm giving you permission to take the shortcut. If you think about it, look at the ones that had positive exponents. Negative 532 had an exponent of 2. 452 exponent of 2. This one would have a positive exponent and then these three or these two had negative exponents and then this last one had a positive exponent on it. They have a positive exponent because they're big numbers to start with. So think about it. If you're making a big number smaller, then this exponent is going to go up however many places you move the decimal point, right? So here we move the decimal point two places. You can add 2 to 6 to get 8. Here I move the decimal point two places. I made a big number smaller. You add 2 to negative 18 to end up with negative 16. Here, you move the decimal point one place. That's a big number. I made a big number smaller, so my exponent gets bigger. You add 1 to negative 21 to get negative 20. Here, you have a small number. Small numbers have negative exponents. So this the exponent is going to have to get smaller. So you're making a big number smaller. I'm sorry, back that up. You're making a small number bigger. When you make a small number bigger, the exponent goes down small number bigger, the exponent goes down. So in this one, number four, I'm adding negative one to 50 or essentially subtracting one. Here, I move the decimal point three places. That would have a negative three exponent on it, so I'm adding negative three to negative 16 or subtracting three from negative 16. Adding a negative is the same as subtracting a positive. Hopefully that will help you as we go through the rest of these examples. Okay, so now let's take a look at doing operations with scientific notation. I'm going to start off by just going through again and doing A, B, C, D, and E with you and just following the rules that we figured out. So in A, you just multiply, right? So you multiply the coefficients. Negative 4 times 12 is negative 48. And add the exponents so you get x to the 18th. The next one, multiply. 3 times 20 is 60. You can just add the exponents. a to the negative fifth, a to the negative fourth, a to the twelfth. Just add negative 5, negative 4, and 12. Negative 5 and negative 4 is negative 9. Negative 9 and 12 gives me 3. The next one, they all have a base of 5. So add your exponents. It becomes 5 to the twelfth. The next one, they all have a base of negative 8. Add the exponents. So keep the negative 8 in the parentheses. And then negative 2 plus negative 6 plus negative 7 gives me negative 11. Now that is not in simplest form. We would make that 1 over negative 8 to the 11th. But I'm going to leave it like that right now because I'm just trying to get you to think about the rule again. And letter E, not everything has the same base, but 6 to the fourth has the same base as six to the tenth, so I could make that six to the fourteenth times negative five to the second has the same base as negative five to the ninth, negative ninth, so I could combine those and make that negative five to the negative seventh, right? So we're multiplying the big numbers, we're adding the exponents of things that have the same base. You're going to apply this to scientific notation. So the other half of the paper, you're applying this. So start with the very first one, letter F, 2.5 times 10 to the 6 times 3 times 10 to the 2nd. Multiply. Use your exponent rule. So 2.5 times 3, we know, is 7.5. 2.5 times 3 is the same as doing 25 times 3, and then since it's 2.5, you slide the decimal point back 1, so it's 7.5. And then on the 10s, they have the same base. So add the exponents. You've got 10 to the 6 and 10 to the 2nd. That's a total of 10 to the 8th. And we're done, because that problem's in scientific notation. Letter G. Negative 1.6 
times negative 4. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply my decimals together. Negative 1.6 times negative 4 is essentially the same thing as doing 16 times 4, which is 64. And it's positive because a negative times a negative is a positive. But it's 1.6 times 4, so it becomes 6.4. Times 10, add your exponents, 8 plus negative 12 is negative 4. So it's 6.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. And there you go, answer in scientific notation, done. Letter H, multiplying three things together, that's okay. Multiply nine times eight times two. Nine times eight is 72, 72 times two is 144. And then you take your bases of 10, we've got 10 to the negative third, to the negative 15th, and to the negative fourth. So add all of those up to give you negative 22. Now this one is not in scientific notation, right? 144, the decimal point's not in the correct spot. So I'm going to make 144 smaller, which means my exponent's going to get bigger. Okay, so you move the decimal point to 1.44. I'm going to do this the long way, times 10 to the second, and you're combining that with times 10 to the negative 22nd, which really gives you 1.44 times 10 to the negative 20th. So that's what I was saying before. If you make a big number smaller, the exponent gets bigger. You're adding to. And that's your final answer. All right, so now that you saw how I did the other problems, take a minute to see if you can apply it for this one as well. So stop the video, see if you can do it. If not, come back. Letter I. You're taking everything to the third power. So negative 4 to the third power gives you negative 64. Multiply the exponents on the x gives you x to the sixth. Taking everything in there to the fifth power, 2 to the fifth power is 32. Multiply your exponents, a to the 20th, b to the 30th. Bringing everything to the second power. Negative 12 to the second power is 144. Multiply your exponents, give you m to the 10th, n to the 16th, p to the second. Apply the same thing to letter L. So we're going to do 6 to the third power. Not 6 times 3 yet, 6, that 6.0 to the third power is 216. And then we multiply the exponents on the 10. That becomes 10 to the 18th. Now the decimal point on 216 is in the wrong spot, so I need to make that 2.16. You moved it two places. You're adding positive 2 to 18 to give me 10 to the 20th. All right, let's take a look at the next one. We're squaring everything. So negative 2.5 times 10 to the 8th squared. So I'm going to do negative 2.5 times negative 2.5. Now, negative 2.5 times negative 2.5 is the same as basically doing 25 times 25, right? Just a reminder, real fast, 2.5 times 2.5. Essentially, we're going to do 25 times 25. You should know that that's 625. But because it's 2.5 times 2.5, remember, you've got two numbers after the decimal point that you just multiplied together, which is going to make that 6.25, okay? So that gives me 6.25 times 10 to the 16th because you multiply the exponents. All right, the last little rule that we learned was division, right? And when dividing factors that have the same base, you subtract the exponents, right? So a to the 8th over a to the 3rd becomes a to the 5th power. Letter O, 24p to the 5th over 6p to the 2nd. Well, 24 over 6, you just divide. 24 divided by 6 is 4. p to the 5th over p to the 2nd, 5 minus 2 is p to the 3rd. Boom, done. Now the next one is not as straightforward. Negative 12 is not evenly divisible by 18. So we reduce negative 12 eighteenths. Well, you can divide those by 6. So that gives you negative 2 over 3. And then you've got n to the 3rd over n to the ninth. Well, you would end up with n to the 6th 
on the bottom, right? Now, however, that is a fraction, and you have an exponent in the denominator, all right? Now, I want you to just think for a second. Suppose I told you everything had to be on the same level, because in scientific notation, everything has to be on the same level. Let's just think about this for a second. If I flat out divided negative 12 divided by 18 or negative 2 divided by 3, negative 2 thirds, what is that as a decimal? Negative 2 divided by 3 would give us negative 0.6 repeating. And then let's think about it. If I have n to the positive sixth on the bottom, if I flopped, put that up to the top, wouldn't that be n to the negative sixth on the top? So essentially, these two things right here, they're essentially the same thing. This is the answer that I would want on a test or a quiz, but this is still the same answer as this. I want you to think that way when you're doing scientific notation because this is okay for a problem like this, but having a fraction in scientific notation is not considered in scientific notation. So scientific notation, again, is a decimal, a number times 10 to some power, and that number has to be a number between 1 and 10, but less than 10. So keep that in mind as we're doing these, because we're actually sometimes going to get some strange decimals. So looking at this, we flat out divided 24 by 6, we subtracted the exponents, we're going to do the same thing here. 8 divided by 2 is 4, right? You can say 4.0 or just 4, it doesn't matter, times 10 10 minus 2 is 8. 4 times 10 to the 8th. Done. That one's in scientific notation. But the next one is 3 over 12. Now, 12 divided by 3 is 4, but 3 is on top, 12 is on bottom. So we need to be thinking of this 3 twelfths is actually 1 fourth. Now, 1 fourth is not allowed as part of scientific notation. So you're going to write 1 fourth as a decimal. 1 divided by 4 is 0.25, or 1 fourth is 0.25. Times 10, subtract your exponents, the top minus the bottom. 9 minus negative 3 is the same as 9 plus 3, which is 12. So the exponent would be 12. And then you look at your final answer. 0.25 is not in scientific notation. It needs to be 2.5. So it would be 2.5. That would have an exponent of negative 1 on it. So you're adding negative 1 to 12 or subtracting 1, and you get 10 to the 11th. So again, we made a small number bigger, so the exponent went down 1. Now looking at S. 15 divided by 10. A lot of people look at 15 divided by 10, and they're like, oh, that's 1.5. Yeah, when you divide by 10, that's just sliding the decimal point to the left. But some people might not look at 15 divided by 10 and think of that. You might look at 15 divided by 10 and say, oh, I'm going to reduce that fraction. 15 over 10, we're dividing by 5, is 3 over 2. And 3 over 2 is 1 and a half. And 1 and a half is 1.5. Okay? And so now we're going to subtract our exponents to get times 10. Keep in mind, it's the top minus the bottom. So it's negative 4 minus negative 7. Here's a visual down here at the bottom. Negative 4 minus negative 7. Remember, when you're subtracting a negative, it's the same as adding a positive. So that is times 10 to the third power. And that one's in scientific notation because the decimal point's in the right spot. So there's another link for the practice problems. So when you need explanations for the practice problems, then find the scientific notation operations practice video.